Good morning, Internet. Last week, Littleton Witch and I went down to Waimati for a couple of days, just to explore the area. While we were in Waimati, we stayed at the Queen's Lodge, which is a sort of upmarket backpackers in a gorgeous old historic building. We picked this place kind of randomly to stay at, but it actually turned out to be the perfect place because it has the most wonderful, quirky little museum in it. And Nikki, the owner, showed us around. We've got a collection of skeletons on display at the moment. Um, they come from all over the world and they represent a range of different uh, genres, so different species from different areas of the animal kingdom. So we've got some bird skeletons, um, mainly the skulls. We've got an ostrich who used to live in our petting zoo many, many years ago. We've got an African hornbill, and I think for me, the very strangest one is the Eurasian woodcock with its long, long beak. Next to that, we've got our only snake, which is a little Vietnamese grass snake, and that's the only snake skeleton I've ever managed to collect. As you can imagine, there's lots and lots of bones in there, so there are lots and lots of work. But behind him, there's both an alligator and a crocodile. Our alligator is the one at the top, the bigger skull, and he's from America. And our crocodile is a wee Siamese one, and he's from Cambodia. Next to them is a turtle skull. And on this big display over here, we've got all of the animals that have really unusual sets of large teeth. So at the top, there's a beaver, and then there's everything from muskrats all the way down to the porcupine at the bottom there. And some of them have got some huge teeth because they need to be able to burrow and bite through things like trees. I think for me the very strangest of all of the skeletons is this box puffer fish down here. That came from the coast of Borneo and he was just literally sitting on a pile of seaweed up on the sandy beach and I was really excited to find him. The most exciting um, species for me as far as conservation goes is this little frog in the corner who's actually a toad and he's one of the bufo groups of toads and these toads are known in Australia as cane toads and Indonesia has a set of them as well and they're pest species just about um, throughout Asia now but mainly in Australia where cane toads do a huge amount of damage and in Indonesia where they're starting to eat all the other wildlife there. There's two little uh, insectivorous bats there as well. And on the large display of skulls, there's everything from uh, a wolverine to a dog, and you've got a fox and a cat there as well. So we've got some pretty interesting carnivores there. And along the bottom is a giant gecko gecko, and he's got a hugely long tail. These skeletons originally came from our museum, which was part of uh, Glenshire Educational Menagerie many, many years ago, so we've had them for years and years. I've got one for adults, if you like. This is one of our rarer, more unusual bones, and this is called a baculum bone, and it's actually the penis bone of a raccoon. Now, there's only a very few species of animals that actually have penis bones, and raccoons have quite a large one, as you can see. We have a really large rhinoceros beetle, who's been placed in a dome. We've got quite a lot of things in domes and they're usually the rarer and more unusual things. Things that you maybe don't see or collect anymore. Seahorses, and people love the hypnocanthus, which is what seahorses are called. They're getting more and more rare in New Zealand and throughout the world, so they're not really collectible anymore. Below that, we have a couple of really old fashioned toys that kids used to play with, where they used to have to try and get the cup and the ball together. Oh, the very, ball. very frustrating, <laughs> but keeps them amused for hours. This is the fossilised um, bone of a bison from way back in the Ice Age. And as you can see, it's quite large, but it's only the little part of his leg rather than the larger part. We've got some pretty unusual fossils here, actually. This is the fossil tooth of a horse from way back years and years ago when horses lived on the plains, way up through Europe. And then beside that is the vertebrae of a dogfish, which was a species of very large and, I suppose, quite toothed fish that lived thousands of years ago. The nest of a lone bee, from way back millions and millions of years ago when bees actually made little houses and lived in them separately as individuals rather than in a group setting, which they do now. While we're on the border between 
Thailand and uh, Vietnam, we came across tri tribes people that lived in the hills, and one of the groups was called the Hamong, and this is actually a hat that one of the Hamong people were wearing. Uh, they have different hats for whether or not they're married or unmarried and whether or not they're looking for a husband or not looking for a husband. And each of the hill tribes has their own different headwear as well. So they're quite diverse groups of hats you can collect. So this is called an ungatarium and it's from the time when Rome first took over Egypt. And this was used to collect the tears of the grieving during a funeral session. So when people cried, they collected the tears and they also actually paid people to cry at funerals. And their tears were also collected and placed in the ungatarium, which was placed in the funerary with the body. So that's quite unusual and very, very old. Uh, and we'd really like, I suppose, the Egyptian and the antiquities that we have here. They're quite unusual. Yeah. The bat. Bats. bats are wonderful. They're some of my favourites, the little bats. They're cute, aren't they? Um, and some sets of uh, shark's jaws that uh, came from, from around New Zealand. All different ones, actually, that I've collected off fishermen over the years. They think I'm a little unusual asking them for the heads of the fish they've collected, but... They usually get over it. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? You should see their faces. They go running up and say, oh, can I have the head? <laughs> Whoops. So, um, I'm Nikki from the Queen's Lodge, and we have Artifacts Cafe, which has the museum that you've been looking at. And we're open every day from Wednesday to Sunday inclusive. And on the last Sunday of every month, we have our big market here. And you come along and see crafts, local craftspeople displaying their wares. So come along and see us. We'd love to have you here. So if you're looking for somewhere to stay in Waimoti that's a little bit different, and a lot of fun, definitely come to Queen's Lodge. Highly recommend it. This video isn't sponsored any, in any way, it's just, I had a lot of fun here. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment. And I'll see you next time. Bye internet.